Hello my friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta Furcht, a watercolor artist based in Italy with a strong passion for our supplies. Today I'm swatching all the lavender and uh, wisteria watercolors that I have in my collection, mainly lavender. And I have uh, nine colors to swatch. It's going to be fun and it's a color that I have recently discovered with um, an incredible potential for uh, landscapes, especially. Let's swatch them right now. This lavender video belongs to this series of violet purples in watercolor. I will put the link down in the description box where I'm exploring all the possible violet purple that are available in watercolor. Of course, uh, most of them are single pigments. Lavender is not a single pigment. And here I have Lavender by Rembrandt, very reliable brand. It's my go-to lavender, but uh, we're going to swatch it side by side with uh, other lavender that I have and that I have bought for this uh, video. Let's start right now. Let's go to... Actually, they're not nine, they are ten because I also have Rosa Gallery, then I have uh, Roman Schmal, I have four Paul Rubens, now I have three Paul Rubens. Then I have Daniel Smith. I have two Daniel Smiths. And I have my beloved Rembrandt, huge tube. I have Van Gogh and I have, uh, no, sorry, this is Daniel Smith and this is Michael Harding. So quite a nice collection of lavender. Um, for a color that I just discovered. It's quite a huge collection. Can't wait to swatch them side by side and see the difference. Let's start. Okay, we start with Daniel Smith. I have not tried most of this lavender. I have tried Roman Schmal and uh, I use a lot Rembrandt. I have tried Paul Rubens, but I have not tried most of the others. And this is Tanya Smith's great um, dispersion on paper. This is a classical formula for lavender, PW6, which is titanium white, PV15 and PB29, so ultramarine violet and ultramarine blue. Lovely combination. This is great color to use in sky. Look at how beautiful this is. Of course, it has a lovely granulation because uh, the ultramarine colors are naturally granulating. Lovely, very lovely. Starting with Daniel Smith because uh, I always start uh, either with uh, Windsor & Newton, but Windsor & Newton doesn't offer a lavender so far. Not that I am aware of. And now Rembrandt. Uh, let's see what, let's see if there is a difference. The formula is identical, but this is uh, more, this is darker and more leaning towards blue, I think. Actually, the order of the ingredients is different. Uh, this starts with um, PB29, this starts with PW6. I wonder if it is like in food where uh, you have um, ingredients in a descending order. In food you have, I have worked in food um, 
marketing um, long part of my life and you start from the largest ingredient with the highest quantity i wonder if it is the same here so in this case the formulation is identical but with the different orders which makes sense because this starts with white and it's more pastel and this starts with blue and actually it is bluer it is darker and bluer now let's switch to michael harding here lavender um i think they're very much in the same uh, style very minimalist professional michael harding is a great artist brand i have swatched quite a few colors i have a video of this also i will put it in the description box and this looks maybe whiter and this has exactly the same ingredients same formulation white ultramarine violet and ultramarine blue but in the same order of daniel smith starting with white if someone knows if there is a meaning in the order would you please let me know I have this feeling that uh, there is a lot of white in this. Wow, this is very pigmented. It's harder to move, but it's hot today, so it might maybe paper dries faster. No, it's not harder to move, actually. My brush was slightly dry, but as soon as I wetted it in water, dispersion is quite easily. I think it is more pigmented than um, the previous brands and more opaque. Um, the impression is that there is more white, more pigment overall, but especially more white. I hope you can see that on screen. Um, this is more pastel once again than the previous ones. Now that they are drying, what I'm saying about the Rembrandt is maybe not so true. They have a they dry very differently from the wet face to the dry face. Very interesting color. Now, Roman Schmal, you know that Roman Schmal only makes tubes. Also from Roman Schmal, I have a full video. And for this one too, I will put the link in the description box. This is absolutely wonderful. Wow, Roma Schmal is a beautiful, beautiful brand of fine arts. These watercolor paint by Roma Schmal are just wonderful, very pigmented. A soft granulation, which is apparent in all other brands. Michael Harding, not yet, we'll see when it dries, but very apparent already in Roma Schmal. It's nice because each of them has a slightly different hue and here the formulation is slightly different for the first time because they don't have ultramarine violet but they have manganese violet pv16 so they have titanium white ultramarine violet pb21 and pv16 manganese violet the result is different but very beautiful also i have a full video about all my manganese violets i put the link as well Let's go to Van Gogh. Van Gogh is uh, the student grade brand of Royal Talents. So the same makers of Rembrandt, but it's a student grade. It's very good student grade. I don't have very many Van Goghs, but the ones I have are all very nice. I have titanium buff. In principles, this should be less saturated than uh, its cousin Lavender by Rembrandt, being Rembrandt the artist grade and Van Gogh the student grade. But this is really lovely, this one. It is uh, pigmented. I really like Van Gogh. I think uh, this is at least at the same level of uh, the other student grade that I sometimes use, that is Kotman. In principles, I prefer artist grade. 
but um, Van Gogh is really worth uh, using if you have them because it's really nice paint. So this is Van Gogh. Now Paul Rubens has two different lavenders. They have lavender blue and lavender violet. Let's start with lavender blue and it is PV23 dioxazine violet. PB29, much more in blue, and PB6, PW6. Here it is. I actually, frankly, find that Port Rubens is a good brand, good uh, price point, and uh, it's just below the other, I think, artist brands, but it's not a student grade. It's uh, an affordable artist grade, in my opinion. It's very nice paint. I use it a lot. It's my kitchen table palette and also I use it in the studio for practices. I don't use it for bigger landscape or commissions or bigger works, but in my sketchbook I like to use Paul Rubens because I can really play around with it without uh, fearing to waste uh, my paint. And this is the lavender blue by the lavender blue by Paul Rubens. And it's very pretty. So this is lavender violet, and uh, it is a bizarre composition. It has always ultramarine blue, but then PV three, PV three is a pigment that uh, I have never met before, and uh, I have no information about this. Uh, PV3, I don't know much, I confess. I have looked up, but there is not much information on the internet about this PV3. It is slightly less saturated than uh, other brands, but a pretty color as well. This should be pretty in botanicals, flowers and so on, I think. Whereas the blue um, shades, I think, are nice, very nice for sky as well. I use it a lot for sky in lavender. Now Rosa Gallery. Rosa, Ga I have lavender on my hands. Sorry, I just realized. Um, Rosa Gallery has an incredible dispersion on paper, always. Very good quality paint from Ukraine. I like this brand very much. And this has also the same formulation of uh, Paul Rubens, PB29, PV3, and PW6. Mm, I will look again before the end of this video, some information about this PV3. I think I read something about no, not being very um, light fast, but I will double check before the video ends and come back to you with some information. This is definitely pastel. Although it has the same formulation of uh, Port Rubens, this is definitely a violet and this is a light sky blue. Very pretty though. So, now I have uh, Wisteria, which is by Daniel Smith, Wisteria. This beautiful flower, too much paint was overfilled. And uh, lovely color for florals, this one also, or for, also for backgrounds. Look at how pretty it is. It is a muted pink. In any case, it is uh, white and uh, Quinacridone magenta. PR122. And it gives a, a muted shade of pink. Very soft, very nice. And I thought that I would compare this to Lilac Purple by Paul Rubens because 
They have a similar formulation, quinacrylol magenta, dioxazine violet PV23 and PW6. So PR122, PV23 and PV6, titanium white. Let's see the difference. Danny Smith is always so pigmented. But they're quite comparable, I think, in hue. This is slightly darker and slightly more bluish because of the presence of the dioxazine violet. But uh, I think they're quite uh, comparable and it was a good idea to swatch them side by side. Very opaque. And now we let uh, these beautiful colors dry and we try some mixes. Okay, for my mixes, I will use my Rembrandt, which is uh, such a large tube that uh, it's a good idea to use it for mixes. And as usual, I will take some colors from my Paul Rubens uh, palette, where there are some basic colors, primary and secondary, and I will mix them together. As usual, I will mix on paper which is easier and fun. And I will start with one of my favorite mixes, which is uh, burnt sienna and lavender. For a muted gray. This is a lovely grey lavender a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is a bit overwhelming compared to um, compared to lavender because lavender is so delicate. So the ratio will not be 50-50, but slightly more lavender. Lovely soft grey with a yellowish undertone. It's perfect, for instance, for uh, monuments and buildings. For monuments, you often have this yellowish uh, warm stone, and I think this mix is perfect. I'm curious to see what happens if I mix uh, lavender and uh, a primary yellow like cadmium. Yellow, cadmium yellow. The risk is getting mud, of course, because there is white and it is a multi pigment. Um, a multi pigment color lavender, but no, nice green. <laughs> Nice green. Hmm. Interesting. Alizarin and crimson. Well, this is actually matter red. Hmm. Thunders. There is the sunshine out. But I can hear some faraway thunders, which is a very good thing. It's raining a lot here and we had a serious draft. So I'm so happy. My garden is uh, very happy about this rain. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Oh, with a laser in crimson is delightful. Um, reddish violet, so nice. Very pretty. Let's mix it now with um, ultramarine blue. 
Uh, this is a mix that I often use in sky, ultramarine blue and lavender. Too much lavender here, maybe. I just um, accentuate the darkest, it's blue shade. And now I'll try Cerulean, which is also a nice combination for sky. This is PB36, one of my favorite colors. And this one by Paul Rubens is very nice. One of my favorite blues. For, for seaside, also for seascape. And... Uh, I think it just um, swallows a little the cerulean, just uh, disappears the cerulean. Let me just swatch some pure lavender here so that we remember the original. This is pure lavender so that we can compare what pure lavender with other colors. Yeah, this is pure lavender. Actually, it changes. It's nice mix with other colors. Mm, it's very cloudy now. I hope that the light hasn't changed. I'm afraid, yes. Now, this is a Terra di Pozzuoli, which is a sort of um, transparent English red. This is Quite a weak color, but it's transparent. It's PR 101. Let's see what happens once we mix it with uh, lavender. We should get a sort of gray, I think. put some washi tape on side so it won't warp okay interesting color this one very nice now i'm trying some yellow ochre mm. this yellow ochre by paul rubens is a beautiful one i think i like it it's very golden And what happens here? A bit muddy, maybe. This is, oh, this is unexpected. Uh, a muddy gray. A muted color. Interesting. They're all interesting, these mixes with lavender, because lavender tends to granulate and separate, so it's interesting. I'll take some phthalo green. PG7. I use, I use phthalo green because it's one of the very few single pigments greens. Wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Turquoise. Absolutely delightful color. Look at this. Dots. Delightful. Now, we let this dry and uh, very curious to see them dry actually. Delightful mixes. What can I say? Once again, I'm mixing all these colors side by side. Gives me lovely surprises. Uh, I never thought the lavender could be this different from uh, brand to brand. Let me wash my hands. Um, yes, I double check this PV3 that we find in Rosa Gallery and Paul Rubens. It, used, uh, it is used um, the only brands that uh, I have found with this uh, pigment are White Knights 
and shin hand it's called Mucil violet and it's not so light fast so it's still pretty but it wouldn't be my first choice of course um, and uh, i think that really once again this is absolutely a nice color to have i always say that i'm sorry i know but i'm really crazy about this lavender color lately because it's not pastel it's soft and delicate but not pastel and this is great despite having white in it it's not a pastel color still uh, retains some transparencies except for the michael harding it granulates um, it has a nice uh, mm, texture i really like it the wisteria is also nice but uh, i wouldn't call this a staple in a palette but yes the lavender i think is very nice for painting shadow and sky so why not have a try here you have the whole collection so you can choose and uh, they're all beautiful actually they're all beautiful this first row you can't go wrong absolutely you can't go wrong even the van gogh is very nice there is a store coming the weather report said the sunny today which is very weird i think i have left uh, my book uh, outside on a chair in the garden so when i finish this i would rush to the garden my dog has come to see me ciao 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 amore ciao 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 he is really, he really is a good boy, the goodest boy. Vero Toto, you are the goodest boy. Let's uh, see what the mixes give. Very interesting mixing color, despite the fact that it's not a single pigment. This is lavender. So, of course, I made a mistake. You know that one of my characteristic is that I always make at least one mistake in my video. So this is with burnt sienna, a uh, lovely warm uh, stone color. Keep this in mind. This is the pure lavender, so you can compare pure lavender with the other colors. You know what? We swatch the other colors side by side. And uh, very interesting, just play around. Let me know if uh, you have a lavender, which one, and, uh, and if you use it for mixes. I never thought it could be so interesting for mixes. The only mixes I used to do was with ultramarine blue or burnt sienna for this uh, stone color. That's very interesting. But they're all really nice, especially the Fatano green. Pozzuoli red is wonderful. I'm not sure how to use it, but it's wonderful. For I think for sky, it is absolutely wonderful. Clouds. And uh, this yellow is absolutely delightful. So let me know what you think. Let me know your experience. I'm always happy to chat with my followers. And I see you in my next video. I'm rushing to save my book that I left uh, under the rain in the garden. Ciao, ciao. Thank you. Ciao.